In the previous videos, we've been learning about different kinds of control algorithms. We've learned that there is a trade-off between speed, accuracy, and stability of the motion of our robot joints. We've seen by eye that changing the control algorithm or the control gains have a big effect on the goodness of our control. By eye, we can easily see whether our control is stable or not. But if we want to get better with our control tuning, we need to have a way to actually quantify the speed, stability, and accuracy of the joint motion. Now, we have simple capabilities of looking at numbers with our microcontroller on the LCD screen. But for a greater level of sophistication, we need to have a greater ability to record and examine numbers. We could have that if we had the ability to communicate between our microcontroller and our computer. Today, we'll be learning a method to do that called UART. UART stands for Universal Asynchronous Synchronous Receive Transmit, and it is a type of serial communication. The term serial communication means that only one bit of information is sent at a time, and the bits are sent one after another in a series. There are multiple communication protocols for serial communication, and UART is one of them. A protocol is a set of rules about how the information will be sent. Our communication can only be successful if the sender and the receiver both know the same rules. With UART, one of the rules is that we can only send one byte at a time. A byte is 8 bits of information. So if we are sending a number, we can only send numbers between 0 and 255. We send this information by turning a single voltage high for 1 or low for 0. Also, we have only a very specific amount of time to send each bit. The indicator of this amount of time is called the baud rate, which has units of bits per second. Each byte of information is sort of bookended by a single bit at the beginning and at the end. The bit at the beginning is called the start bit, and the bit at the end is called the stop bit. The start bit is always low, and the stop bit is always high. Also, when nothing is being sent, the voltage is kept high. And one more thing, we always send the rightmost bit first. I know this sounds like a lot of rules, but knowing these rules will help you if you ever need to troubleshoot a UART connection. Let's look at an example. Suppose that we want to send the number 10 over a UART connection. First, we have to convert the number 10 to an 8-bit byte like this. Now, let's draw what the voltage will look like over time during this communication. The voltage will start out high, because a high voltage is what is sent when no numbers are being sent. Then, just as the number is about to be sent, the voltage will drop low for only one bit. This is the start bit. Then, we send each bit from right to left. A high voltage means 1, and a low voltage means 0. Finally, there is one stop bit, which is high, and then we return to a high voltage for sending nothing. Now, how much time passes during one of these bits, and how much time passes during this entire communication of one byte? We can find that out from the baud rate. Suppose that we have set our baud rate to 9600 bits per second. That means that each bit requires about 0 0.1042 milliseconds to send. 
Since we have eight bits of information and one start bit and one stop bit, the whole communication of this entire byte takes about one millisecond to complete. Now let's set this up in our code. Open up the same workspace we've been working with this entire class and go to the project that's called Control, which we used in the last video. First, find a UART block in the top design. You will find the UART block inside the communication menu. Wire a logic low to the reset input. Then double click on the UART block. Here is where we can set all of our settings. Make sure there is only one stop bit set and set the baud rate to 9600. Now let's go to the pins. We need to set the RX pin to 12.6 and TX to 127. Those two pins are internally connected to the USB connection of our PSOC so that we will be able to do our serial communication to the computer over the USB. Now let's write some code. Build the project right away so that our new UART block in the top design is recognized. First, we need to start the UART block. Then, at the top of the for loop, we'll add an infinite loop to just receive values over UART and print them to the LCD screen. We need to create a new variable to hold the value that we're receiving over UART. We'll call this variable receive and we'll make it an unsigned 8-bit integer since we know that with UART communication we can only send an 8-bit byte. Now any time that we are asking the PSOC to receive a value over UART and no value has been received because no value has been sent, the PSOC will think that we received the value zero. So we can make the PSOC wait in the code until it receives a value by putting a loop here that says while the received value is equal to zero, continue receiving values. We will only break out of this loop when a value is received that is not zero. Now scroll down to where we have the line of code for printing to the LCD screen. Copy that line and paste it up here. We don't want to print count now, we want to print receive to the LCD screen. Make sure your PSOC is plugged into the computer and then program the PSOC. Next, we need to set up our Python code to send values to the PSOC. In order to do that, we need to install another toolbox for Python. Open a web browser and navigate to the page shown here. Scroll down to find the wheel file for Pi Serial. After it downloads, find the location where it downloaded. Open up 7-zip, which we installed way back in the beginning when we were installing NumPy. Extract the Pi Serial Toolbox. Now go find the extracted Pi Serial folder and copy the folder called Serial. Now go find where Python is installed. For me it's in the C drive and then Python 2.7.
go to the lib folder and then site packages and paste this folder serial that we just copied. Now open up Python idle. Type in import serial and hit enter. If the serial install has been successful, you'll get no errors here. Click file new file so we have a place to write some code. In our code, we'll start by importing the serial toolbox. Next, we'll open a serial connection using the serial.serial function. Next, we'll set the baud rate. We need the baud rate here to be the same as we set it in PSOC. We also need to now open up the port. Type in COM1 here for now and we'll change the number later on. Then we'll open the port and then we'll close the port. In between the opening and closing, this is where we'll send the information to the PSOC. The function to send information is write. We'll do sir.write and then B stands for byte, and we're going to attempt to send the number 10 like this. Now we need to fill in the correct COM number. The COM number indicates which port we should be sending the serial data to. Start by opening up your device manager. Then find the line that says ports and expand it. In this list, there will be something that's called kit prog, and it will be followed by a number that says com and then a number. Look at that number and then go back to the Python code and type in that number. Now, run the Python code. If this is working, you'll see a number appear on the LCD screen, but the number isn't 10, it's 48. What's going on here? The reason this happens is because we aren't sending the number 10. We're sending the characters 1, 0. One of the common applications of serial communication is the communication between a computer and a keyboard. In order to make this work, there's a special number assigned to every character on a keyboard. This code is called ASCII code, and I'm showing here an ASCII table. Notice that the number 0 corresponds to the decimal value 48. When we sent the characters 1, 0, our PSOC code received the character 1, printed the associated number, then received the character 0 and printed its associated number, which is 48. We would really like to figure out how to send actual numbers rather than characters. Let's look at how to do that now. We need to start by creating a variable with a type called byte array. We could put any number of bytes here that we want to send over the serial connection, but for now I'm only going to put one byte. Let's put the number 10 here as the number we want to send. Now in the write function, let's write i. Run the code again. This time you should see the number 10 appear to the screen. So this is how we can send numbers between our PSOC and our computer. Try to send a couple of additional numbers. Start with numbers that are all less than 255. Then try sending a value that is greater than 255. What happens? You should notice that it is not possible to send a value greater than 255. That's because we can only send 8 bits at a time with our UART communication. We've now learned how to send values from the computer to the PSOC. In the next video, we'll be learning how to do it the other way around, how to send values from the PSOC to the computer.